Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a leak code problem that looks pretty complex at first glance. It's called maximum difference between even and odd frequency 2. But don't worry, we're going to break it down into simple, easy to understand pieces. Let's get started. Okay, so here's the task. We're given a string of digits and a number, which we'll call kvj. We need to find the absolute best score we can get by taking the frequency of one character, let's call it a, and subtracting the frequency of another character, b. But, there are three important rules. First, this calculation has to happen inside a substring that has a length of at least k. Second, character A must show up an odd number of times in that substring. And third, character B must show up an even number of times. Our job is to find the maximum possible score across all substrings and all possible pairs of A and B. If we can't find any that fit the rules, we return negative one. Let's walk through an example to make this concrete. Say our string is 1,122,211 and k is 3. Our substring needs to be at least 3 characters long. Let's pick our a to be the character 2 and our b to be 1. We're looking for substrings where 2 appears an odd number of times and 1 appears an even number of times. If we look at the substring 222 inches, the count of 2 is 3, which is odd. The count of 1 is 0, which is even. Perfect. The score is 3 minus 0, which is 3. That's a great starting score. Now what about 11,222? The count of 2 is 3. That's odd. The count of 1 is 2. That's even. This also works. The score here is 3 minus 2, which is 1. The final answer for this example is 1. And we just found a substring that proves it. Our goal is to find this best possible value systematically. What's the first idea that comes to mind? Well, the most straightforward approach is just to check everything. We could generate every single substring that's long enough. For each of those, we could count the frequencies of all the digits. Then, we could test every possible pair of characters A and B to see if they fit the odd-even rules and calculate the score. But, if our string is long, this would take an enormous amount of time. We're talking about a complexity that's something like n squared or n cubed, where n is the length of the string. That's a clear signal that there's probably a much smarter, more efficient way to solve this. The biggest reason our first idea was slow is because we were looking at every single substring. So let's flip the problem around. What if, instead of starting with the substring, we start by picking our two characters, A and B. Since the string only contains digits from 0 to 9, there are only 10 possible characters. The number of pairs of distinct characters is just 10 times 9, which is 90. That's a small constant number. So our new plan is this. We'll loop through all 90 pairs. For each pair, we'll solve a simpler problem. What's the best score for this specific A and B? If we can solve that simpler problem efficiently, we can just do it 90 times and take the best result. Now for our fixed A and B, let's think about how to calculate the score. A substring is just a long prefix of the string with a smaller prefix cut off from the beginning. So the count of a C in a substring is just the count of a up to the right endpoint minus the count of a up to the left endpoint. If we write out the full formula for our score and then do a little bit of algebra, we can rearrange it. It becomes the A minus B count for the right prefix, minus the A minus B count for the left prefix. This is a huge clue. It means we can think about the problem in terms of prefix values, but we can't forget the odd and even rules. This is the real trick to the problem. The count of A in our substring has to be odd, and the count of B has to be even. Let's think about what this means for our prefixes. For the count of character A to be odd in the substring, the parity of its count must flip between the left prefix and the right prefix. For example, if it was even at the left, it must be odd at the right. For character B, its count in the substring must be even. This means its parity must stay the same between the left and right prefixes. If it was odd at the left, it must still be odd at the right. This leads us to our main strategy. For any prefix ending at some position, all we really need to track are two things. First, the difference value we calculated, which is the count of A minus the count of B pris. And second, we need to know the parity of those two counts. There are only four possible parity combinations. Even-even, even-odd, odd-even, and odd-odd. So here's the plan. We'll slide a right pointer across the string. For each position, we'll figure out its value and its parity state. Then, we'll look back at all the left positions we've seen and find one that has the perfect starting parity state to give us a valid substring. And among those valid starting points, we want the one that makes our final score as large as possible. All right, here's the complete Python code that implements this idea. I know it might look like a lot at first, but don't worry. We're gonna walk through the key pieces step by step, 
So it all makes sense. First, the setup. We start our answer at negative 1, which is what we'll return if we never find a valid substring. Then, we set up two loops to iterate through every possible distinct pair of characters, A and B. The core logic will run inside these loops, once for each pair. Inside the loop for a specific pair of characters, we initialize our tools. The most important one is an array to keep track of our states. We can call it min previous diff. This array will store the best value, specifically the smallest count of A minus count of B, that we've seen for each of the four parity states. We initialize it with very large numbers, but, for the state corresponding to even even, we set its value to zero. This represents the empty prefix before the string even starts, where both counts are zero, and the difference is zero. We also have counters for our A and B characters, and then we begin our main loop, scanning through the string with a right pointer. Now for the trickiest part, handling the length constraint k. A substring must be at least k characters long. This means that if our substring ends at position right, its starting point left must be at least k positions behind it. So as our right pointer moves forward, we can only consider left prefixes that are far enough in the past. In the code, when right gets to be k or more, it means the prefix that ended k steps ago is now a valid candidate for a left endpoint. At this point, we update our min previous diff table. We calculate the state and value for that newly available prefix, and if it's the best value we've seen for that state so far, we record it. Finally, inside the loop, we put it all together. Once our window is potentially long enough, which happens when right is at least k-1, we can check for an answer. First, we determine the parity state of our current prefix ending at right. Then, we figure out what the target state for our left prefix needs to be. Remember, we need to flip the parity of A and keep the parity of B the same. We look up this target state in our table to find the best value we've recorded for it so far. If we found one, we can calculate our potential score. We take the difference value at our right pointer and subtract the best difference value we found for our left pointer. This gives us a score for a valid substring and we update our best answer if this new score is better. So how much better is this approach? It's a huge improvement. The time it takes is proportional to the size of our alphabet squared times the length of the string. Since our alphabet is just the 10 digits, this is basically a constant, 90, times n. We call this big O of n, or order n time, which is very efficient. We just have to scan through the string a fixed number of times. And the space we use is tiny, we just need a few variables, and that little state tracking array of size 4. This doesn't grow with the input string, so we call it order 1, or constant space. So to wrap it all up, what are the big lessons here? First, if a brute force solution seems too slow, it probably is, and there's a better way. A huge clue was that the characters were limited to just 10 digits. When you see a small fixed set like that, think about looping through it on the outside and solving a simpler problem on the inside. The trick of using prefix differences to analyze substrings is a classic and powerful technique. And finally, we saw how we could take complex rules, like the odd and even constraints, and boil them down into a small number of states. This allowed us to keep track of just the information we needed in a very efficient way. I hope that explanation was helpful and made the solution clear. If it did, please hit that like button, subscribe for more leak code breakdowns, and feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, you can always support the channel through the Boba Fund. Thanks for watching, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.